Yesterday, Stephen Wells was on the program and made some charges concerning the letter to the or the your, your guest editorial in the in the New York Post. Good morning, Claudia. Good morning. And so I, I'm sure you heard the comments. He's saying that you have the the third worst record in the assembly for attendance, and uh, and and challenged you on the comments about the passing of your mother and about the uh, the graduation of your of your son. So made some pretty tough comments, saying you should give the money back to the taxpayers. How do you respond uh, to Stephen Wells? Yeah, first, thank you for uh, defending me. I know you and Jeff question him. First, I think he really needs to, instead of questioning the New York Post and the fact that I've been published in the New York Post a number of times for standing up against the corruption, he needs to explain why he maxed out his donations to Cuomo after the SAFE Act, after Cuomo was on, under federal investigation by Pre Perara, after Dean Skellos and Sheldon Silver, Republican and Democrats, leaders of the, of the Senate and the Assembly, were indicted, and why he has millions in state contracts and why this isn't pay to play. And let me match him. Why doesn't he cancel his contracts, uh, demand that Cuomo give the money back before he seeks office as a, as a public official, because of the conflict that it, it, whether it's pay to play or not, it sure looks like it. When you get yeah. millions of dollars to, to, or I mean, you get millions in contracts and you have a donation after all the things we've been fighting for, the good people in Albany trying to fight this, like me standing up against Silver, the, Silver, the first person, all these things. Why is, you know, it's kind of, he sounded almost disingenuous. He said, oh, Bill, this is an outrage. I mean, it, it sounded like he was reading off a sheet of paper as opposed to like really being an outrage. The outrage is that, I've been spending my entire career in Albany, about five years, now five and a half, trying to fight these things. And uh, it's it just, I, I just thought it was just sort of hollow. I, I mean, yeah. is that all you got? I Can mean, I? really, you know, everybody knows. You know what my district looks like. You know I've been fighting silver. Everybody knows that it's not, it's, it's just talking about my record, maybe. Talking yeah. about something substantive, Can not I, all this. Uh, Can I, in, you know, in, go ahead. in fairness, I, I do yeah. want to ask, uh, obviously, in his business, it would be important to have state contracts. And, uh, and it would be tough for any business owner to say, you know what, I'm going to give up all this aspect of my revenue. However, I so really, are you saying that he is the wrong person to be running for Congress because of his business? Absolutely. That's exactly what he is. If you want to get engaged in pay to play, which now has been uncovered as the greatest problem we have on the national and the state level, then don't run for office. Keep your contracts. I mean, look, I'm a business owner. We don't have any state contracts. We don't have any government contracts. We have independent business owners who are struggling to make it in this country. And those are our customers who can't pay. Let me say something about the government. The government always pays. The taxpayers are always on the hook. And when you're willing to say, well, you know, that's the way it works. You know, that's not the way it's supposed to work. Bidding is supposed to be done anonymously. It's supposed to be given to people who are legitimately getting their contracts. I'm not saying he's not, but why would you give, why would you max out donations? It's not like he threw him 500 bucks. His company maxed out the donation. And then the audacity, he said, he turns around and says, Oh, that's not me. I built my business from the ground up, but my brother did that. That's not me. It's kind yeah, of like yeah. my dog ate my homework. Uh, I, I mean, I have, it, it's yeah. nothing really. There's just a disingenuousness to it. And quite honestly, this is a really serious issue. This is what I've been fighting in Albany. This is the kind of stuff we got to end. This is what Preet Bharara is fighting, the U.S. attorney. He's examining these issues, showing Dean Skelos is going to jail. Sheldon Silver is going to jail. Yeah, I mean, that is... Un, uh, it's, I mean, this, this year has like, been unprecedented. This isn't Candyland. Yeah. This is serious yeah. stuff. I, so, I want to warn you. I want to warn you that um, we are having technical difficulties this morning. The computer's in New York are taking over the station and it happens like four times an hour. It might happen to us again in about one minute. If it does, I'm going to have to reschedule the rest of this interview. But Christine has a question. So Assemblywoman Tenney, though, you haven't specifically addressed his concern about the attendance record. Address that if you would. Actually, I have. Last time I was on your show, I explained it in detail. And thank you to Bill and, and Jeff for letting me do that. In 2014, he said, oh, you were campaigning. You have to understand something. I've been living across the street from my mother for 27 years. In her last year of life, she was very ill. She had problems. She had uh, atrial fibrillation. We were having problems with her blood thinner levels. It's something that everyone 
who has a, a parent or a, a family member with that, uh, I went home on the last day of session to help her out with the problem she had with her Coumadin levels. I'll be perfectly honest with you. We did 500 bills in the last two days of session out of, what, 1,100 in a year. The one house bills, I went home to help her. There was no campaign event. Uh, I was dealing with that issue. I mean, yeah, did I miss some days? You have to understand something. We vote on thousands and thousands of bills since I've been in the Assembly. So when you say from the Fox Business Network. This is apparently the year to fix up your home. Mm. Lowe's, the home improvement chain, reported stronger sales in its recent quarter. And Okay, Claudia, you still there? Yeah, I miss that. Yeah, I got like some interference. Do you yeah. understand something? So to answer Christine's question, in the assembly, I have one of the best attendance records. I have missed 4% of all the days. Six years in the assembly, I've missed maybe five days and maybe five half days. So it's not like he's trying to make it look like I have some chronic attendance record. One day in like a two, one to two day period, it was overnight. It was an all nighter. We literally did 500 bills. Now, the truth in there is none of those bills are substantive, except we did some heroin bills. And uh, by the way, in the assembly, we have live sessions. So we can vote by paper ballot. So often, if you come to the assembly, unlike Congress, they don't have live sessions. You will see. On the floor yesterday, for example, they call several committee meetings. We walk out of the chamber to attend the committee meetings. We come back in, and we're allowed to vote and catch up on our votes. So all of those votes he's claiming I missed were all caught up on paper ballots. But this is minutiae. This is silly yeah. stuff. There are members that don't even bother to come in, and that's why in my post piece and what I've been proposing since my very first year in the Assembly is why are we wasting time going and doing all these one-house bills that have been voted on for decades they're built, we should cut session in half, cut legislative pay in half, and stop wasting the taxpayer money by making people come in and vote on these silly one-house bills over and over and over. I mean, I voted on some of the same bills in the same year three times because some member, maybe in New York City, wants to make a point, oh, I got this bill passed. There's no Senate sponsor, which under the law means it's never going to become law. Yeah. It's never going to get on the governor's desk. So this is the kind of nonsense I'm fighting. And so... Yeah, when I have life-changing events like my mother's illness and my mother's death or my son graduating from the Naval Academy, uh, and, I, and, and if I'm going to sit, you know, I'm going to miss those opportunities in life, or I can sit and, uh, on somebody's one-house bill, I always make up for the bills. I'm very diligent. I have an excellent record. Uh, I never missed a, a single vote. Yeah. In 2011, 2012, 2013, I only missed for my son's graduation from the Naval Academy. 2014, my mother started becoming ill. 2015, she was ill and died. Other than that, I All mean, right. I've missed maybe a couple of like bills here and there, but this is uh, this is minutia when you see. Got it. I think we've be- voted on what six or seven thousand bills since I've been yeah. there. And by the way, in a year, only about maybe fifty are even substantive. All right, I want to. Uh, and I've I, never missed yep. a critical bill. Let me add this: the Conservative Party ranking agencies they know what's going on in Albany, and this is just shows that Steve doesn't have anything substantive to talk about that's actually in fact I was I was discussing this yesterday in the assembly. People laugh that they actually say, how could anyone say that you would vote for a tax increase, which is absurd because right, they haven't. Right. How could anyone say that you would be in a tank with Sheldon Silver, which is absurd. My the so called seventy seven percent is almost less than anyone in the House. Most of the including Republicans in the Assembly, most and if you could include the Senate they're voting 95 to 100 percent, if you want to call it voting with Sheldon Silver. Yeah. They're voting on local bills. And so, you know, we're all voting the same. It's not voting with Sheldon Silver. But on the substantive bills, I, you know, I have a great record, like all of us. You know, like anyone that's trying to take a stand, there's only about six of us yep. who really take a stand. But and I wanna, I, that's I, inside I, baseball. Yep. He wants me to talk about inside baseball because, really, he's sitting there saying, yeah, I want to talk about my record, my record as a prosecutor. Right. I'm like, record as a prosecutor, you're running for Congress. I've been fighting white-collar crime, standing up to white-collar crime every day against people who are engaging in this type of activity. It's a little different than just being a prosecutor and you're, you know, you're settling 99% of the cases you're dealing with on a criminal, you know, in town court or wherever you yeah. are. All right, uh, Assemblywoman Claudia Tani, I, I appreciate it. And I have to tell you that the portion of that was overridden by the uh, the Fox feed 
uh, it's, uh, I was able to keep it on TV and through our online, but we'll fix this all up. And I, I appreciate your, your time yeah. here this morning. Thank you. One I, thing I, is, I, I did I'm, want to tell you though, I'm that happy to debate whenever we can debate, I, I just, yep. I don't know why this keeps coming up. I know I've said over and over on your show yep. and co- people have commented to me, why are they bringing up this debate thing? Everybody knows, even Bill has said, well, Claudia, we'll need to debate. I don't know why. Well, I and I think we'll come up with some some uh, real issues. Something. I, I think we're going to I, I, listen. We we know you as a legislator. Um, these two, we we really don't know in in that regard. So we may very well be doing a uh, an event at some point where the two of them are in. You would be welcome to attend, but uh, you'll be given obviously equal time at, at when you can do it based on your your well, yeah, assembly I mean, schedule. I'm actually, so. in, in spite of what Steve says, I'm actually in Albany right now doing my job, standing, trying to fight this yeah. fight. Uh, trying to do, we're having a little fun now because I've been asked to do the legislative correspondence response. So we've been doing a little bit of fun, you know, sort of yeah. poking fun. You do, we're doing a little skit, you know, making fun of some of the things that go on in Albany this year. So mm-hmm. we're hoping to have a few more members. Maybe we'll get Anthony uh, Brindisi to do a little cameo for us okay. as we uh, All right. as we uh, go on. But it's, it's fun. I mean, look, I mean, this is serious stuff, and Steve needs to focus on serious stuff, not this. You know, the outrage is really his phony outrage. The outrage is what's going on in Albany and the fact that I've been standing up against the grain. I mean, it's it's tough. I mean, I okay. can take my crumbs off the table and walk away. But I've stood there and I uh, had the courage to stand up to some of these people. And look where they're going. They're going to jail. And I, I feel like I had a small part in that. Assemblywoman Claudia Tenney, uh, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, for the record, uh, I gave her extra time because of the this technical issue that's going on i'm going to switch right now george phillips because we're running behind schedule uh george is also a republican from the binghamton area and is uh, is running will be in the primary and george phillips this is your moment good morning thanks for coming on good morning how are you good you want to respond you you're sitting there as as assemblywoman tenney was was talking and it seems that she and stephen wells are are at odds over or over her attendance your thoughts on that yeah, so I want to focus on the issues here, and um, I, I would say just from my own personal point here, I'm a teacher, and I did take a lot leave from my teaching job to work on this campaign. It was really hard for me uh, financially and, and, and difficult, but no one's irreplaceable, so I have, I have substitute teachers, uh, a couple have filled in for my teaching load, and um, I know that was the best decision, and I, I do think it's very important to show up to work and do your job. I would have to say last year, it was the spring of 2015, I had students, and we were visiting Albany on a tour day. And for anyone who's visited Albany, you can look up and see the votes and how your members voting. And uh, I had heard that Tony had a reputation, some of them had a reputation for missing votes, and there had been an article sent around with all these missed votes. And uh, I would have to say she wasn't there that day and missed a lot of votes. So uh, that's just the one point of interest, and yeah. I think it is very important to show up and, and do your job. And I felt like I owed it to the voters and my supporters in this race that I would do it full time to the best of my ability. And um, it was hard for me financially, but I I felt I couldn't do both. I couldn't teach and do this race. So yeah, I do think I do think the voting record is very important. I, I do want to warn you: we are having a an extreme technical difficulty here this morning. And at any point, I'm thinking in in, in about two minutes, we could be overridden by our New York feed. And if that happens, uh, the, our interview will continue on television, on Radio Pup, and uh, online at WIBX950.com. But the air uh, broadcast, we have to allow it to do what the computer is doing, unfortunately. And we're working on it as we speak. Now, um, issues. Uh, the one thing that she does mention is, why aren't we talking about the issues? What are the key issues for you, uh, do you feel, that need to be talked about? Well, I'll be in Utica to, uh, this week, tomorrow, talking about my upstate jobs plan, touring businesses, and saying, look, a lot of our problems may be on the state level, but the federal government is piling it on. We need tax and regulatory relief on the federal level that the state has to match. That's the central part of my plan, and I think that will help get upstate go- going again. I know Utica and Rome have some real success stories. The nano labs are, are taking off, and Marcy, we also have... Uh, the technology park and Griffiths, that there's so many great things going on. My plan would help that. It would help uh, small businesses and entrepreneurs get going. We would try to attract more capital investment if we had lower taxes and regulations into these regions, into the Mohawk Valley and the Utica area, to get things going again. I think that's central. 
I think it's central that we have not talked about a clear plan to replace Obamacare. And I'm talking about that all the time. I'm saying Americans need more choices. Most of your listeners now, as they're listening in, who have health care, it's plan A or plan B that they get to choose from. And the choices are very limited. The employers are putting in about $10,000 a year. The average family is putting in another seven to ten. This is just outrageous. The system was broken before yeah. Obamacare. We need more choices. And uh, you know, I can tell you right now, being on a leave from my teaching job, it's, it's, it's very hard to find health insurance. I'm paying a huge, huge um, premium each month, and then out of pocket is going to be very, very high. This is just not right. We- yeah, George, if you could sit tight just for a second, I believe Fox is going to override our signal here. And if they do, it's going to happen... And it didn't, so maybe they've uh, they have corrected the problem. Although it might happen at thirty. Uh, either way, I, I haven't asked anybody else this question, and I'm going to start with you. And unfortunately, um, it is you're going to be. This is a cold question for you, so uh, I'm interested in your answer. Uh, everything that seems to be going on, the president now uh, mandating that schools across the country uh, follow their policy on transgender bathrooms. Where are you on this topic? I want state and local control. This is obviously a sensitive issue, and I believe in the dignity of of every person, every child, no matter what their orientation is. But I think this is something that that can be dealt with um, just uh, privately on the local level. Uh, I, I don't want to wouldn't want to draw attention to a student who's having these issues. And it seems like the school could work with the family and the student in a safe way to say, "Look, this is where we where." your orientation is and this is the bathroom you're going to use and uh, work it out on a private level we're tired of mandates from from the president uh, I mean this is just a series of illegal executive orders he didn't like parts of the health care law and he started arbitrarily changing dates he tried to essentially give amnesty to illegal immigrants through executive order uh, he tried to take away gun rights through executive order so this is not how the constitution was set up we don't have a king we don't have a monarch it's a separation of powers, and it's federalism, state and uh, federal and local control. And um, I think the, the local government can handle this issue with still upholding the rights and the dignity of these children and their families. Uh, final question. Uh, the difference between you and Stephen Wells and you and Assemblywoman Tenney, uh, if, if you do become our congressman, what, what differences uh, will there be when you, when you make it to Washington? I'm going to be a leader from day one. I feel like I've really led on ideas. I have clear plans. I'm not just going to be a freshman congressman who's a backbencher who's uh, voting. Voting is certainly important in doing your job, but I'm going to try to lead on key issues. I've mentioned uh, the upstate jobs plan. I've talked about uh, health care reform. I've talked about taking on the Federal Reserve. No one else is talking about the Federal Reserve and Wall Street. And If you look at the Fed kept interest rates for so low, they caused the crash. They bailed out the big banks. They've been engaging in something called quantitative easing, buying trillions of dollars in treasury bonds. I'm going to be a leader on key issues from day one. I'm going to bring coalitions together with conservative ideas and and try to pass things that improve our country and improve our region. All right. Uh, and, George, uh, I, we have been trying to set up a bit of a, an on-air forum. Uh, Assemblywoman Tenney will not be available until June uh, she's certainly welcome, and we'll we'll have to give her equal time. But uh, to learn more about you and Stephen Wells, we're we're looking to set up a two person debate, if you will. Uh, would you participate in that if we do it next week? Absolutely. Okay. All right. We're we're working on it. And George, I appreciate your time. Hey, thank you so much, and I hope everyone has a great day. And I look forward to seeing you on the campaign trail. If you want to see more about the ideas and solutions we're pushing, I'm at www.phillipscongress.com. I know people are disgusted with the mess in Washington and Albany, but let's have hope and uh, let's let's do our due diligence and looking at the candidates on the issues in this race. Oddly enough, you might be a little piece of uh, good luck for us because it looks like the fix uh, has been uh, the, the problem we've been having with our computers has been taken care of during our interview with you. So there you go, George. We appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me on the show and uh, best to your team. And I look forward to seeing you hopefully next week. Right, cool. George uh, Phillips, thanks so much. All right, birthdays. Here we go. And I think we do have this problem under control. I don't want to... That's wood I was just knocking on, just for the record. Savannah Caruso and Utica, happy birthday. For Wednesday, May 18th, Sue Elliott in Hubbardsville, Robert Peterson in Floyd, happy, happy birthday. And the cake will go to Savannah Caruso in Utica. Savannah, you get a cake from the Florentine uh, Pastry Shop. 
of the legendary Florentine on Bleecker Street in Utica. Join our VIP club and submit your birthday online at WYMBX950.com, or you can send us a postcard. WYMBX Birthdays, 9418 River Road, Marcy, 13403. Quick break, coming right back at WYBX.